Welcome to the Elevated Trader Podcast. I am Dr. Kristen Kidgel. And I am Tracy Ball. Join us every week as we journey into becoming better traders. We believe becoming better traders involves elevating our skill, mindset, and our health. In each episode, we will discuss the current book we are exploring, and we invite you to join us on this journey. Are you ready to elevate your trading, mindset, and health to the next level? Let's do this. All right, welcome back to The Man's Search for Meaning by Victor E. Frankel. This is part two. So glad you guys could join us. And uh, Kristen, so I kind of want to talk about this one section here. It's easy for the outsider to get the wrong conception of camp life, a conception mingled with sentiment and pity. Little does he know of the hard fight for existence which raged among the prisoners. I see this happen in my own life. I've seen, I've done it where I've disconnected myself from whatever it is I'm experiencing or re- seeing, listening to from somebody else's life. Teenagers are notorious for it as well. It'll never happen to me, that kind of attitude. And I find that, and I think what this, what I got out of this anyway, is that when we look on situations, we have a tendency of looking at the experience itself, looking at the facts themselves, instead of actually looking at the lesson that comes from that experience. We get caught up in the facts instead of the lesson. And when I see or when I when I read this particular passage, I had I, I tried to keep reading. I, I tried to keep going further and further, but my mind kept going back to this one thought. It kept going back to this same passage. It kept going back and forth. I needed to resonate on it a little bit longer. And mm-hmm. I, I think that that, go, again, goes back to the whole reading with intention and trying to find the little nuggets that are buried inside of the words themselves or the experience themselves. And is there a chance that you and I at some point may end up in a concentration camp? I highly doubt it. The odds are extremely, extremely rare and odd that it, that, that would ever happen to us. And I get that. But does that mean that we don't have things that we could learn from this? Are there things that we could still learn from this experience? That's what makes everybody's story so valuable. Everybody out there has an experience. Everybody out there has a story and it all has value to it. What is that value? How do you find that value? It's not from listening to the facts of the experience. It's about diving in going, okay, well, those were the facts of the experience, but what did it take? What was the under, what was the stuff that's, that's not being said? What's the stuff that we're not seeing or that we're not reading about that got you through that event that I can pick out and take for myself and grow from and elevate myself to another level. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. And you made me think of something I know I say all the time is things are not happening, you know, to you, they're happening for you. And Mm -hmm. so when you're in the thick of it and you remind yourself of that, then you start to look at the lesson that might be in it. And you have to look in the mirror and say, who do I need to become to get through this, Mm -hmm. to identify the lessons? Because there's not usually just one lesson, is there? Exactly. Now, the other part of this that that really, I guess, got me thinking is that there's there's also, you know, what did what did they have to do to actually survive? Right. And through Mm -hmm. Through the story, I mean, you, you can see some of the atrocities that they had to do themselves just to survive. And when you're faced with a life and death type of situation, you know, th- there's going to be times and it doesn't even have to be a life or death situation, but it could be a matter of two people are up for promotion, whatever it might be. And you know that if you get ahead, that means that somebody else is not going to get ahead, right? There's There's always this this line. And, and even in this, in this environment, the concentration camps, if your name got onto a list and you were heading onto a train or you were heading to one of the crematoriums or you were heading to one of the, the chambers, whatever it might be, you, your immediate thought for survival was, how do I get off this list? Not realizing or not even thinking about the fact that if in order for you to come off the list, that means somebody else is going to be replacing you for that, that role, right? Um, so I guess the, the part that really got me thinking was this whole this whole aspect of maintaining your humanity while you maintain your physical life and where are those lines that we draw and are willing to cross 
in order to get um, get ourselves elevated to another level, right? Is there, because I, I see there's certain things that some people are willing to do to, um, to, to take it to the next level. And let's just talk, let's take it back a little bit and not even talk about the Holocaust. Let's take it back and let's look at a, an environment where, like I said, you're looking to get promoted. You want to be promoted, but you know that they're talking about somebody else um, as also up for the for that particular promotion. Do you cross that line and say, okay, well, you know what? I'm going to start making sure that everybody knows what their faults are. I'm going to start pointing fingers at them and make sure that they don't that they look bad to management or that they look bad to whatever or you know whatever it might be. That's a line that some people I think move or are willing to cross or not cross for their own satisfaction and and what have you. I think that that leads to a life of regret. That leads to a life of sadness. That leads to a life of loneliness and not understanding what those principles are or not understanding what those priorities are in your own life or knowing what the future you looks like, not keeping that in mind, that future you um, will keep you from, I guess, it'll open the door so that you can make those choices now and then regret them in the future. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, a couple of things. You made me laugh a little bit because I was just thinking of politics. <laughs> I don't know about in Canada, but it definitely happens here. And so we call it politicking, which would be those two people going for the same job. But um, I mean, it really kind of, with that situation, we're talking about values and integrity. So, you know, everybody's so different. Absolutely. And not having those values clearly defined in your mind, I think makes it harder for you to make the right choices now. You know, there, it's interesting because, uh, you know, we hear some of our core group talk a lot about doing, say, um, like an obituary, like, a, like a, the eulogy for yourself, right? Your own eulogy. Oh, the eulogy. Write your eulogy. You... Yeah, I totally, that just crossed my mind right before you right? said that. And it, it kind of mm -hmm. leads to that, that same, same concept, right? And a hundred percent. Yeah. Have you done that? I haven't, not yet, but I plan on it. But I think that can clearly define who you are because in this book, one of the things that Victor says is, is later on, he says, no matter, no matter how you cut it, you can call this lucky, you can call it miracles, whatever it might be. But the fact of the matter is the people that came back, he guarantees that it wasn't the best of them. And what does he mean by that? Well, number one, you know, a lot of them had to sell their soul in order to survive, right? They crossed those lines. And how do you, how do you come back from that? How do you, how do you come back from crossing that line once you've crossed it and get back to the person that you wanted to be? And then others that were better didn't cross those lines. And because of that, they sacrificed their own lives. So there's, there's kind of a double whammy coming from that whole statement. And so the real question, at least that I think the real question is, how do you get through life? How do you get through anything while maintaining your human humanity? Because there are some, some things that I just would not want to survive because the, the other side of it doesn't look very good. Yeah, you want to break it down to instincts? Okay, and just, just get down into that instinctual desire to survive? Okay, there's certain things. I mean, we see it in movies all the time of of what people will do. You see it in natural disasters or in in whatever. They become cannibalistic. They become they, they just out for themselves. Like you don't even want to walk down the street without without having some sort of protection because the next guy's gonna rip off your arms just to steal the food in front of you. And it's it's those types of lines that I don't think everyone is capable of crossing. And those are lines that I don't want to cross because I don't want to survive and be that person on the other side of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I think that it's important, at least for me, it's important to really think deeply about who the humanity part of me is, not just the physical part of me and, and know what those things are and clearly define them so that, like I said, I can walk and make choices based on who I want to be in the future, not necessarily what the immediate reaction and the, the self-gratification is going to be right now. Would you interchange the word values for humanity? Yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would. Just a different perspective. I think my internal dialogue is using the word values. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I completely agree. So to me, that's the same thing, right? Is humanity is it's, it's what we hold dear as, as far as values are concerned. That's what mm -hmm. makes us different. I think it's time to write your eulogy and I'll, and I'll write mine again. I did it. Um, wow. It's been 11 months. It's time to do it again. Sounds good. Okay. I, I, and I, and I encourage other people to do so. And if you're not sure how to do that, just Google it because it is, it is enlightening for sure. I was just going to throw that challenge out to everybody. Okay. So there you go. Great minds. You have it. Kristen gave it to you already. <laughs> okay. So feel free to feel free to email it to us too if you want to. Ooh. Yeah, I'd love to hear it or or at least throw it up on Instagram if you want. Yep. Whatever. Sounds Any good. Any social you can tag us in it. That'd be great. All right. Till next time. Catch you guys later. Bye. Thank you for joining us today. For more information about the show as well as our list of current reads, check us out at www theelevatedtrader.com. Remember to subscribe and share if you found value in today's episode. See you next week.